Hello, my name is Chad Williams, and today we're going to talk about matrices. So matrices are just what you would expect from SPSS or an Excel worksheet. It's just we have some rows and we have some columns and we're going to put some numbers in it. Let's look how that looks. So I'm going to go data underscore m and that's going to be my variable name. I'm going to use the function matrix. Now what's a function? I'm not going to get into it into this uh, in this video, but what a function is is basically a bunch of code that was written that you don't have to look at that's going to do stuff with what you give it. So if I give it 0, matrix 0, 10 by 3, let's look at what that does. So data m has, it's a little more complicated than we're used to, but what it has is 1 to 10, then 1 to 3, and then a bunch of zeros. What that means is we have 10 rows and we have 3 columns. Now with matrices, we could do an extra step, which is we can actually click the matrix and it pops up. And now we see, oh yeah, okay, we have 10 rows and we have three columns, great. But they're all zeros, that's not very helpful, right? But let's first, before we start populating it with stuff, you need to look at how we can actually access data here. So we did this in a past video with variables where we start looking at different elements of a variable but now we have two dimensions instead of just one. So the way it works is we can use data underscore m, which is our uh, variable name, and then what we want to do is we want to tell it what row and what column we're looking for. So I could say, I want row one and then column one, okay? And that's gonna be zero. Now, it's not very obvious and we'll make it more obvious in a moment here, but that's this zero because we're looking at row one and then column one, okay? so. I could do the same thing with column two, of course. And then I can even say, well, I want rows one to five in column two, and there you go. But it's not being too clear, so let's first off just look at one column entirely. So what you see here is I've left the row index empty. When you leave it empty, what that means is you want all of it. So what this is gonna do is gonna tell me all the numbers in column one, and that's what we see here. But it's not very obvious that we're getting the right numbers, so let's add some random numbers in there. I'm gonna use the run if function. Now this function, what it does is it gives us numbers from zero to one by default. And the first thing I'm gonna put in is how many numbers we want. We have 10 rows to populate, so I'm gonna give 10 numbers. And if I run that, we're seeing that this is column one, we're replacing all the numbers in column one with random numbers from zero to one. Great. Now if we actually look at data m, column one and row one, sorry, row one and column one I should say, we get 0 0.689, and that's this number here. Okay, so if we then go, what about two? Just to show you. Okay, so now we're at 0 0.478 and so forth, because we looked at row two in column one. So really quickly, I'm gonna delete this. I'm gonna create random numbers for the other two columns. So column two and column three. And suddenly we have random numbers filling the whole thing. We also replaced the, the random numbers in column one, so they're different now, just because I reran it. Okay, so if I wanna see, what about, uh, all rows, oops, sorry, uh, not all rows, sorry. What about row one, um, but all columns? So we get that. We get 0 0.8 something, 0 0.4 something, and 0 0.8 something. So because we left the column empty, we're looking at all columns. Just as we talked about earlier, we could say, well, I wanna look at the first five rows, but all columns as well. So there's the first five rows, and then all the columns, great. And even here, it's given you an indication of the indexes you can use. So if I want to use the fifth row and third column to get this number, I could do that like this. Fifth row, third column, and there's that number. Now, what if I wanted to get the first and the fifth row? Not first two fifths, so I don't care about the two, three, and four, just those. So I can use C. So if I use C, one comma five, and we've done this in another video, but one comma five, that's gonna give me 0 0.8, uh, and we're looking at row three here, or column three here, so 0 
0.5 here, and then the fifth row is 0.87, so forth. So we're able to pick out specific rows that are not continuously linked to each other. But just as we can actually pull these numbers out, we can also change these numbers. So let's say I want to look at the first row, third column, which is 0.80. So first row, third column is right here. What if I want to change that to 99? I could just indicate this area here and suddenly now it's 99. Not only can we use these indices to pick out information, but we can also change that information with these indices as well. Let's do one thing here. So I'm gonna do the third column is NA. So what NA means is not a number. And so what I want to do is basically I use NA personally as a placeholder. So it's currently my third column is empty and I need to add stuff to it. So what I wanna do is I'm going to refer to my third column in all rows. And what I'm actually gonna to wanna to do here is I'm gonna take all the numbers from column one, and then I'm gonna add it to all the numbers from column two. These are all the numbers from column one. These are all the numbers from column two. And we're gonna add them together and then put it into column three. And that's what we get here. So this 1.38 is this 89 plus 49. And suddenly we're doing that from row to row. So we can populate an entire column in that way. This is great. We have numbers. We know how to replace it. We even know how to manipulate it. But it's not very informative. I mean, what are these columns exactly? So let's start naming it. Call names is the function we're going to use. And we're gonna to refer to this matrix here, the matrix we've been using the whole time. So call names is gonna now want us to give it a list of names. So I'm gonna just say condition one, condition two, condition three. You see that I use the C, so I'm making a list of words, condition one, two, and three, and I'm saying, hey, change the call names to that. And suddenly when I run it and I open this, now these have titles. So now it's gonna help you keep organized and, and be more informative of what these are. So if I'm looking for condition two now, now I know it's here. Now, of course, with condition one, two, three, it's still pretty intuitive where they should be, but you can have different things like dog lovers, I don't know, cat lovers, and then fish lovers, and then suddenly, you have these column names. Now, we could do the same with row names. I do this less uh, because I don't have as much need to do it with row names, but I could do it as well um, in the same way. I'm gonna just write out a bunch of R1s to R10. And if I run that, suddenly I have dog lovers, cat lovers, and fish lovers as my column names, but then I have R1 to 10 as my row names. Um, maybe one last thing is we have this this matrix, right? So what if I go data M 2 equals data M? So what that's going to do is it's just going to copy the matrix data M into data M2, which is great. But then now I could do stuff too. So I could go um, just do a quick manipulation of data M2. So data M two equals data m2 times let's say two. So I'm going to multiply all of these numbers by two. And that's what we see here. So they're all times by two now. Um, but then what we can do is data m plus data m2. And what that does is it looks at each individual cell. So this row and this column is going to add, so this 0.89 so it's gonna to add to the same location with the other matrix. And so we add them together and that's what we see. Each cell added from one matrix to the other and then that's what we get. And we can even name this as data M3. And suddenly we have a third matrix, which is just the addition of the first matrix with the second matrix. That's a 
pretty quick overview of matrices. Uh, but now, if you're thinking of Excel and you're moving into programming from Excel or even from SPSS, you can start looking at numbers in a very similar way. And so maybe this is a little relatable from those programs.